Jared! stuck with me all these years and I thought it was really it's an important time uh, to turn the camera on ourselves and to take a good look at who we are uh, this crazy nation of ours uh, so yeah that was it yeah what was it like managing all the crews that you sent around the country and then was getting the story surprise you that came back logistically really challenging I mean we had 92 crews all over the country uh, we had a big uh, and great group of producers and we all just hunkered down, and uh, uh, we were really excited of it. I mean, knowing that you have to do everything within 24 hours, and it, it, it really, uh, there's a lot. You know, this is something I've been thinking about for a really long time, and I and I I we're living in pretty interesting times, and I thought um, it could be an opportunity here to turn the camera on ourselves and to capture a portrait of this country in in, in these really tumultuous and uh, you know fascinating times that we're living in. We had a great group of people. We we put together um, maybe you know thirty plus thirty to forty uh, 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 people who were all producing in some capacity, uh, and we started riffing on ideas on things that we wanted to see on a day. Uh, you know, the idea was to film twenty four hours in the life of this nation. And we were very, very uh, adamant that there were some uh, uh, there were some rules. If, if something happened within that 24 hours and we didn't film it, and it was filmed somewhere, we could go out and use it. So that 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 actually didn't really happen that much, except for news footage about North Korea. You know sending us a bir uh, birthday present with the uh, you know the ballistic missile launch and. Uh, the tests that they were doing on Fourth of July. Um, uh, so anyway, we 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 just kind of riffed on ideas and got together an incredibly talented group of people and uh, had 92 crews. We sent them all over the country to all 50 states plus Puerto Rico and DC, and uh, they came back with footage that you know was surprising, compelling, horrifying, uh, mind blowing, beautiful. Um, and you know, I'm really, really grateful to all those people who work so hard. I'm really, really grateful to all those people who work so hard on the film. There was an additional process, and still, the music is—it's not finished yet. I mean, the film isn't really finished yet. I think sometimes festivals are an opportunity to to kind of try out, test out what you've been working on, and uh, to get feedback from an audience and to see how it feels. And it's certainly. Um, you know, there's a lot to learn from 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 showing your your film publicly and and, and uh, you know just feeling the energy. There are things that happen like oh that they didn't realize that was funny or you know there's a moment here maybe there's too much tension we could kind of let a little air out. Um, 
but the music is, uh, um, you know, a work in progress at this point right now. I mean, the challenge is shooting all of it in a single day and making sure that you have enough footage to make a compelling piece. I mean, that is telling a story out of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, hundreds of vignettes. That's really difficult, too. That has its own challenge because you, you don't have a traditional beginning, many, middle, and end. What you do have is a day uh, and uh, that, that we all know what a day is like. So uh, that that's helpful in some ways because you start with – you know, a beginning and you have an end, uh, especially in this case with the 4th of July, you have an end with fireworks. So that's nice that you have this, you know what your ending is, uh, and you know what your first shot could be. Uh, um, uh, but, it, but it has its challenges, you know. The, the other challenge was the amount of footage that we shot. You know, we're, we have just an endless, we could make 100 movies. Uh, so just getting to it, I'm sure there are stories that we haven't even uncovered. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are things in there. Maybe we'll discover, you know, uh, uh, the secret to the moon landing or something, or somebody think that, you know, it's, it's one of the perks of being a musician is, is getting out there and you get to another country in a really specific one. Being on tour across America is an experience in and of itself that gives you a great sense of the country. And I, There'll be, there's something in there somewhere, um, uh, an answer to some some mystery. And I did a lot of things with the launch of this album, America. You know, we 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 did this thing where we kind of we hitchhiked we, we hitchhiked across the country and you know took trains and buses. We were on a Greyhound for a little while, and you know that was a like a, a kind of a living, breathing, immersive version of the documentary. And the album was this, you know, sonic version of exploring ideas and themes of America and the American dream and growing up in this country. Uh, and this is a kind of the last piece of it. I think it's the kind of third and final piece of it. So, you know. Better if I stand here in the line. I guess. Hey, guys, how are you? I, just, I want to say first off, uh, thank you so much for coming here today. Um, I know we all have really busy lives, and it, it, it means a lot that you showed up and uh, that you're here to kind of witness the birth of this film that we've been working on so hard. Um, so I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Um, when I was a kid, did anybody ever have a National Geographic? How many people out there? Ever get that? When I was a kid, my mother, she gave my brother and I a great gift by subscribing to National Geographic. It was our window to the world, as it is for so many of us. And at some point, when I was a kid, back in the 1800s, I was, uh, they made a book called The Day in the Life of America. And they had sent some photographers around the country to uh, capture and stills um, who we are. And I was always inspired by that. I loved the book, someone actually gave me a copy again recently and it brought back a lot of memories. But uh, it always just stayed in my mind and I thought what an amazing film it would be um, to make one day. Um, so while I was working on our last album, which was called America, and it was about this idea of this incredible country and the promise and hope, but also the conflict and contradiction. And I thought, what an amazing companion piece it would be to jump into that idea that I always had about turning that book into a film. A film. Um, and so here we are. Everything that you're about to see was filmed on July 4th, on a single day. Um, we had 92 crews that we sent all across the country. We filmed in every single state, plus Puerto Rico, MDC. Nobody from Puerto Rico in the house? Jesus. This is New York City. Come on. Come over here. Um, and, you know, they did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And, uh, and uh, stick around after. I think we're doing a q and I guess we are now, if we were, actually. Uh, everybody's invited to the after party. I don't know where it is, but uh, where's the after party? 
She's like, just shut up and finish up now. But you're all invited. I'd love to see you all there. You're all there. It's a small place, but we'll snuggle. Um, and oh, one other thing is the, the, the film, I guess, is eligible for the Audience Award. So if you would, you don't even have to like the film. You could still vote for it. Just saying, there's not a rule there. But thank you guys, I hope you like it. Thanks, bye. There's quite a bit in the film that, you know, I personally don't agree with, but again, I felt that it was really important to give um, uh, uh, people, um, not give people a voice, but to not censor who we are, who our neighbors are, who America is, and to try to get uh, an accurate depiction um, of the nation in this really uh, tumultuous and important time, um, you know, watching the film with everybody, you know, it made me want to spend more time with certain characters. Uh, curious to hear who, you, who your favorites were. Album. It's funny because I, I, I had an idea to make an album where I would travel around the country, I would interview people, and then write songs loosely around the people and the places and the stories that I heard. But I did it kind of backwards. I ended up... Uh, writing this album, and in the middle of it, I said, man, maybe this is that America album that I've always wanted to do. And uh, ended up making the companion piece and, and did a couple of other really crazy things. Uh, I get hiked across the country and stuff like that, but uh, that's another story. Um, but does anyone have any questions? Should we open it up to sure. people? Yeah, uh, let's do it. Since it's a movie, it's your movie. It's um, really, uh, if anybody has a question, you can shout it out really loud. Oh, don't you like? Yeah, with a hat. <laughs> right there. This guy with leather jacket and hat. Or, yeah. Leather jacket I was hat. saying, hello, Jared. You remember me? Time off? Yeah, man. How you doing? <laughs> What's going on? Everything's wonderful. Well, uh, I'm black and Italian, and uh, I, my father passed away a couple of weeks ago. Sorry to hear that. It's all good. And, uh, you know, his parents I met when I was little, like six years old. Yeah. And my mother's from Harlem, and, and uh, like I said, black and Italian. And I grew up with a lot of love from both, both parents, uh, but over time, it was like, a, I guess, a, a month. It was very old school, the Italian uh, grandparents. They ostracized my mother and my father. And uh, at the, uh, we had a celebration for my father on Thursday. Uh, there was an old friend of his that grew up with him since he was six. And I always wanted I always wanted a relationship. With my grandparents. Mm. And uh, he told me a story of uh, when my father wanted forgiveness for not doing what they wanted because his father was dying and they drove to see him. And my, my grandfather's uh, friends and, and uh, I think his brother uh, pulled a gun out, you know, but my father didn't care. So he went in and started shaking his legs and holding him and trying to, and he basically said, go with God. People don't understand the pain that just goes through generations. And it's like, it's such a, it's a good time. You know, I just want to say that. I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, it, it's interesting watching the film with people for the very first time, you know, you get struck by things in a way that you, you didn't before, an emotional component. Uh, you know, I was quite moved a couple of times where I, I wasn't before in the editing room, I, you know, and, and I found things funny because other people found them funny, but, you know, the shared experience of, that's what's so great about having a, a venue to 
you know, uh, share your work like this is to experience it collectively, you know, I mean, that's a very special thing, but, uh, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate your words. Um, anybody else? Maybe on the end? Yeah, a lot of questions. Sure. Yeah. Striped sweater? Yes. Yeah. Hi. First of all, congratulations on the film. That was beautiful. And Thank beautiful. you. Um, I just wanted to ask you, what was your criteria to make decisions on what kind of footage would go into the film? It's a good question. I mean, we have, I, I couldn't even tell you how many hundreds of hours of footage that we have. I mean, we're just buried in footage. We could, could have made a much longer film than this, and it was really hard to decide what to include or not. I mean, there are so many stories that are compelling. Um, and when you make a film, you know, that's, that's part of the challenge. What do you include? What don't you include? Um, and it's also interesting, I think, to see people who you may not agree with. Like, I'm not so sure I agree with Mr., you know, Drinky Man with a gun. Uh, ah, he's great. But I really want to spend a little more time with him. <laughs> you know, I mean, can't we just bring him back once or twice more? You know? <laughs> Uh, and that's what I think is kind of cool about the movies is, is, is that it's a reminder too, like, you don't have to agree with everybody on all fronts to get along with them, to have them be your neighbor, to have them be your friend. And that's, that's kind of a, 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 I think, a really nice, uh, nice thing. But it's hard. I mean, we have a lot. And 10,000 people also contributed you know, we had our 92 crews, and most of the footage was, I would say 95% of the footage was from the 92 crews because the quality of film was better, the storytelling was a little bit more uh, succinct and consistent. But we do, some of the stuff you saw at the end was the, the footage that was crowdsourced uh, uh, via social and things like that. Um, but yeah, who else? Let's try to get through a few more questions. They'll kick us out of here. What do you think about down in front? First of all, the, oh. <laughs> um, the film was absolutely incredible. It made me realize so many different things about my neighbors and how truly lucky I am to have the life that I do have. And also, I was wondering, um, I know that you asked all people, even some around the world, to send you footage of what they think of America and what is important to them. And I was wondering, what are some interesting things that people not from the United States have said about the country that we live in here and how they relate or do not relate to what we are experiencing? Should I tell you the truth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could probably imagine, but you know, I, I did ask people from all over the world to send in their thoughts because I, I was thinking of including that you know, you, you got to ask your neighbors uh, what they think if you want to get an accurate depiction of who you are. But I, we didn't end up using that footage. We kept it um, uh, uh, within uh, the states, with the exception of uh, the space station uh, uh, at the end, um, and uh, uh, and things that were broadcast on the news or radio were also fair game. But you know, it's 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 hard as well when I sit and watch it to remember, like, wow, this is all one day and just a tiny, just the the, the, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's a lot that happens uh, in this country, and uh, uh, but the footage that we got from out of out of the states was uh, from outside XUS was was pretty um, uh, brutally honest. It was uh, yeah, it was interesting. Who else? We, uh, maybe take somebody in the back. Yeah, who's in the back? Raise them high. There we go. Uh, yes, ma'am, the, the, the highest hand raised. Uh, I guess that would be me. Uh, hi. Uh, congratulations on the movie. It thank you. Absolutely beautiful. And thank you for very, in my opinion, accurately representing the feelings within the Muslim community as well. I really do appreciate that. Absolutely. The question that I have for you is, what was the most poignant lesson you learned throughout this entire process? Because obviously you have many walks of life, many different backgrounds and creeds. What to you was the most important lesson that you learned through this process? 
I mean, it's always a good reminder that, you know, uh, ideas are pretty worthless unless you do something about it. And this is a film that was an idea for a very long time, but it's really fun to see it become a reality. To kind of d d dig in and, and to get a great group of people together and go make something happen. Um, you know, I love to, to tell stories. I love to make things and share things uh, with the world. And it's just an absolutely... Uh, amazing thing to do. I never take it for granted. I mean, uh, but I'm, I'm happy that it's here and it's out and it's it's great to watch it with you guys. I learned so much sitting over there watching it with you. It taught me a lot and we're, I'm going to take the film now and I'm totally ruin it and uh, <laughs> no. make it, you know, just five minute episodes for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the Instagram model. <laughs> Uh, there are people too. <laughs> I think we have time for one more. Well, who's got the best question? Oh, how about a gentleman here with it, who's earned the, the gray hair? <laughs> he's earned it. He's gonna shut me down. No. <laughs> Son, you have no idea. Is it on? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Right. Hey, I grew up in the Midwest where people stood when the flag came down the street and they. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and it seemed like the film was awfully dark, and I, either you didn't find that out there, or you didn't think it was worth including. Uh, no, we, we, we did find quite a bit of optimism, and, you know, I feel like it's in the film, but, uh, you know, we didn't ask people to go out and film dark stuff, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, we were specific about some things that events we wanted to capture, certain people we wanted to spend time with, but you know, we didn't dictate what people, what stories people told. We didn't dictate their point of view. As you can see, we went to every single state in the country, so we didn't avoid uh, uh, areas. And um, I don't know. I mean, it is dark, but I do hear in the film a surprising amount of optimism. I hear that people go, yeah, shit's pretty tough right now, but I still think we can do it, which is pretty incredible. And I think what's so important about America and the American dream is they, we have instilled inside of us that this idea that with hard work, with passion, with you know the help from our friends and neighbors that anything is possible. And I still took that away, personally, from the film, but, you know, I, it's a tough world out there for a lot of people uh, in this country, and, um, you know, I think that's, that's what we see, you know? But I didn't write the script, you know? I'm just the messenger here. So it's really your movie, it's not mine. I just held up the mirror with the help of a, 92 other people. So, thank you guys so much. Thank I really appreciate it. Thanks for your question. Man. Everybody, don't forget the uh, film is eligible for the audience award. Don't forget to forget to vote. Don't forget the audience award. You can vote. Even if you hated the movie, you can vote for the audience award. Thank you. And special thanks to uh, Interscope and Emma Lebra. Thank you guys.